Step 10. Analysis of Step 10 for Limerence Anonymous. Thank you, AI, for helping me write this. Analysis of Step 10. Continued to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Understanding limerence, which is a psychological state characterized by intense romantic desire for another person, often accompanied by obsessive thoughts and feelings. It can lead to emotional highs and lows, making it difficult for individuals to maintain perspective on their feelings and relationships. The concept of limerence was first introduced by psychologist Dorothy Tenev in her book, Love and Limerence, The Experience of Being in Love, 1979. Step 10 in the context of limerence. Step 10 from the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous AA emphasizes the importance of self-reflection and accountability. This step involves regularly assessing one's actions, recognizing mistakes, and taking responsibility for them. When applied to limerence, this step can serve as a crucial tool for individuals who may find themselves caught up in the emotional turbulence that accompanies limerent feelings. Continued personal inventory. Yeah, remember step four, that uh, soul searching we did? Taking a personal inventory means regularly evaluating one, one's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors related to the object of limerent affection. This involves asking oneself questions such as, am I idealizing this person? Am I worshiping an idea of them and not respecting who they really are? Are my feelings reciprocated? Often they aren't, you guys. Let's face it, often they aren't. How do my emotions affect my daily life? <gasps> Step one, our lives had become unmanageable. By maintaining awareness of these aspects, individuals can gain insight into whether their feelings are based on reality or fantasy. I'm in the stage right now, I'm Carol and I'm limerent. I'm in the stage right now where I'm recognizing the reality of my limerent interest. I was living in a fantasy for the past eight, nine months, and it's time to be in reality. She sees me as just another member, member in her life. She doesn't see me as anything special. I thought she did, especially uh, recently, but I was wrong. I think she felt bad that uh, I was afraid of her or something. And uh, that's not the same as someone thinking that you're special. And uh, someone thinking you're special, that's a lot of pressure. You don't know when it's going to go away. And um, it's better to um, learn how to accept people as human beings. And I learned also that when limerence is reciprocated, um, it might feel really good for a while, but if it morphs into love, you still got to decide who does the dishes. You still got to decide who takes out the garbage. You still have to decide what kind of relationship you even want to have with each other. I guess it's, it's simpler when it's not reciprocated, but then there's pain. We got to deal with that. Recognizing when we are wrong. In the context of limerence, admitting when one is wrong may involve acknowledging unrealistic expectations or unhealthy behaviors stemming from obsessive thoughts, case in point. For example, if an individual find, finds themselves stalking their love interest on social media or in person, <laughs> like at their job or their house, driving past their house. Last night I was on my way over to my girlfriend's and I the bus went past her neighborhood almost adjacent to her neighborhood and um, I had to turn the other way and remember where I, where I was going I'm going to my girlfriend's house I'm going to visit someone who loves me not going there <sighs> don't focus on uh, that person's neighborhood focus on where you're going Carol they love you and it has been affecting my loved ones they're like, uh, Carol, you're not still thinking about her, are you? And 
Yeah, it's not their job to always be <laughs> dealing with that. Okay, where was I? Okay, recognizing these behaviors as problematic is essential. Um, if an individual interprets neutral interactions as signs of affection, like for example, if my limerent person walks up to me and gives me a hug and um, then walks away, um, I might, you know, back in the old limerent, day, old limerent days, I might have thought, oh, she loves me, she loves me, and walking away, oh my god, why doesn't she love me? And I did have that kind of a reaction, uh, but I, I did not have the she loves me reaction to the hug. I did have a response like, uh, oh, I wonder if she's going to forgive me now and have lunch with me. Well, I don't know. She might have forgiven me, but she didn't have lunch with me. So, <laughs> yeah, reality, Jen Carroll, reality. <laughs> okay. Not to mention treating someone like they're better than you, putting them on a pedestal like they're a god or goddess instead of a human being with feelings and issues and needs just like you. Yeah, and she does. I mean, jeez. When we put someone on a pedestal, we may have higher low expectations that are unreasonable. Yeah. She asked me uh, one day, uh, why are you so quiet, Carol? You know, is there anything you need to tell me? And I wanted to tell her I'm, I'm fucking limerent on you. <laughs> but, yeah, or I'm limerent on you. And Oh, God. She would probably would very likely not know what I'm talking about. So I didn't say anything, but she knows I'm quiet. You know, she knows I'm shy. Her, the, count, the counselor, you know, counselor uh, told her I was shy. She told me the counselor told her I was shy. I'm not shy. I'm limerent. <laughs> Some experience, strength, and hope. I admit that I fear my limerent person so much that I am paralyzed when I'm around them. This person, in turn, has noticed my fearful behavior and then puzzle over it. Yeah. I admit that I am too embarrassed to tell them that I'm limerent on them. They are still wondering today what's going on. That's the inventory I'm continuing to take. Yeah, when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Yeah, I'm promptly admitting this is this this has to have made her really uncomfortable. So I can I can totally understand why she just wants to ew gross, you know, and no wonder she's not calling me. I mean. I have to face the pain. I have to face the music. She doesn't want me around. And she didn't for a long time. She was just feeling sorry for me back in, uh, you know, the beginning of August. She was just feeling sorry for me. Admitting these errors allows individuals to confront their own emotional responses honestly rather than projecting them onto the other person. You might be wondering if I am projecting. Well, I did... I did get a reality check with her, uh, and she still didn't give me any information. She just hugged me and walked away. Okay, well, I'll have to read read your body language. Um, the hug was probably, uh, thank you for understanding, Carol, and the walking away is, but I really don't want to be around you. This is just weirding me out. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to go have lunch somewhere else. Cue, you know, well, she didn't do that, but... I'm going to go have lunch somewhere else. That part was very clear. So uh, this is the adult me doing an analysis of step 10. Taking that inventory and admitting when I'm wrong. And um, I can't uh, make direct amends. I can't, um, you know, talk to her. People, people around me wonder why I'm not talking to her. Why I'm not... Well, because this, this situation is too awkward. It's too weird. And uh, whew, I, we had guidance for a while by a counselor, but <laughs> yeah, the counselor was even a little scared that some boundaries were going to be crossed. And in my humble opinion, I don't think she handled it very well. I deleted those other videos because um, I didn't want to make this YouTube channel look like I was just, you know, going on and on and on about what a horrible person uh, she was and what a horrible program uh, the IOP is. You know, I I need to take what I can from that IOP program, but um, 
boy, you know, counselors are human. And I, you know, I, I will stand by my uh, attitude that um, I really don't think she handled it very well. But I'll get along with her. You know, I'll, I know she was trying to help. And uh, my limerick person, you know, she, ooh. <sighs> Most limerent people are very uncomfortable with their limerence, limerence, uh, focused person, me, you know, most, most of them are, and don't be surprised if, uh, your limerent interest avoids you when they find out your limerent, you know, when they, uh, when they, uh, when they know either when you tell them or when someone else tells them or when they can kind of pick up some weird vibe from your limerence, don't be surprised if they, if they have to walk away. You know, it takes a really strong individual to, to deal with someone uh, being obsessed with them. You know, or really, 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 really wanting them, you know, wanting to be with them, you know, like that. It takes a strong person, and it takes an even stronger person to um, handle limerent, handle their lim handle or limerence. That's why I'm forming a 12-step program. Okay. Again, the meeting in our pocket continues. All right, um, prompt admission, yeah, prompt, promptly admitting when one is wrong is vital in mitigating the potential negative consequences of limerent behavior, and again, whether you tell them or not, whether they know or not, you are going to act limerent, I don't care, you know, being afraid of them, they're going to know, they're going to pick it up, even if they don't know you're limerent, they're going to wonder what's going on, they're going to wonder why you're quiet, behavior is still going to bother them. This could mean communicating openly with friends or support groups about one's experiences of limerence. That's why I want to do Limerence Anonymous. Seeking professional help if necessary. Get outside help if you can't handle it with just the program. Professional help if necessary or if you can afford it, such as therapy focused on cognitive behavioral techniques that address obsessive thinking patterns. I am going to remain in the IOP. I need it. I need help with this, but I guess no help with the, no help with the, uh, interaction anymore. Ooh, I'm done with that. I'm, I'm, ugh. She's my associate too. By doing so, individuals can prevent further entrenchment in unhealthy thought cycles and foster healthier relationships. Yeah, I'm going to have the relationship with her that God intended. Sister, associate, she sees me that way. I'm going to see her the same way. One of my goals is to see her the same way. I can't do this anymore. It's your. It's all yours, God. It's all yours, Lord. I can't do it anymore. Emotional regulation. <sighs> Prayer can help with that, in my opinion. Uh, we'll talk about step 11 tomorrow. That might help. Regularly taking personal inventory also aids in emotional regulation during episodes of limerence. Individuals can develop strategies to manage overwhelming emotions by reflecting on their experiences. Journaling about feelings can provide clarity. Again, there are free journal apps or you can use a notebook and pen. Just don't write graffiti unless permission is given. <laughs> Joke. Mindfulness practices can help ground oneself during moments of intense longing or anxiety. Yeah, I meditate a lot. I pray a lot. Building healthy relationships. Yeah, that's one of my goals in uh, therapy now and in my mental wellness process and universal ethics process. Ultimately, applying step 10 encourages individuals experiencing limerence to cultivate healthier relationships based on mutual respect and understanding rather than obsession or idealization. No kidding. Ooh. Recognizing one's own needs and boundaries while respecting those of others leads to more fulfilling connections. Yeah, when you're dealing with limerence, pay attention to how this might be affecting your friends and loved ones. Yeah. Learn to have relationships with them. They're your support system, or they might be your support system. <sighs> there are other kinds of love people. In conclusion, integrating Step 10 into the experience of limerence promotes self-awareness and accountability 
that are essential for navigating complex emotions associated with infatuation or limerence. It empowers individuals to confront their feelings honestly while fostering healthier interpersonal dynamics. Top authoritative sources used in answering this question. Love and Limerence, The Experience of Being in Love by Dorothy Tenev. Two, The Twelve Steps, A Guide for Recovery by Alcoholics Anonymous World Services. Yeah, AA approved literature will help going to open AA meetings. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, Basics and Beyond by Judith S. Beck. Probability that the answer is correct, 95%. Again, thank you, AI, for your help. Thank you all for listening.